Hello, my name is George, I'm part of the learning team at Newcastle Castle. Since we're all becoming more acquainted with our fridges, we thought it a good idea to do some sessions on historic food. We've come up with a few family friendly recipes for you all to enjoy from the Middle Ages that are simple to make and are very, very tasty. So, the history stuff first. Um, in the medieval period, which is roughly around uh, 1100 to 1500, the Genonia Castle was amongst the wealthiest towns in England. Its merchants who made the town wealthy made their money from the wool trade and also the virginal coal trade, from which Newcastle would become immensely famous. Merchants and adventurers of Newcastle, due to their wealth, would have expected to dine on fine foods in their own homes on the quayside and their townhouses within the newly built walls of Newcastle. According to Sir John Leyland, the Tudor writer, the finest in all the land. Due to the extensive trade links with Europe, in particular the Hanseatic League, which was precursor to the EU, a series of city-states in, in Northern Europe, um, Newcastle had access to what the rest of the world would have to offer, which included spices. The spices we know of coming into the town, according to um, an inventory that we've recently unearthed, include ginger, nutmeg and black pepper, all very common to us today, um, familiar to our dinner tables, but very rare 700 years ago. To have spice in your food was an indicator of wealth um, and power and prestige, a status symbol and a way to show off to your guests. So it's extremely expensive. Our first recipe showcases these spices and was a delicious sweet treat enjoyed by the very wealthy after their main meal. A showpiece, if you like. Today we'll make spiced medieval gingerbread, a little different to the kind of the kind of thing you would buy in Greg's, but just as delicious. The recipe in itself is quite common and you'll find it in many medieval cookbooks. This particular version dates from around 1420. So what you will need is a pan. We've got a metal pan here. It's any old pan will do. Okay. Of course, um, some honey. Okay. Natural sweetener. There's no sugar available or very little sugar available in the Middle Ages. So honey was a viable alternative, a natural alternative as well. So here we also have some spices, you need some spices. So what we have a various selection. We have uh, nutmeg and cinnamon all mixed together. We have ginger, we can eat gingerbread without ginger of course. And my personal favorite, some cracked black pepper. A nice sort of spicy alternative to, to what we already have. Um, also, you will need some bread, the humble white loaf. Okay, now I've not mentioned uh, quantities, but um, quantities, uh, equal quantities of uh, honey and equal quantities of breadcrumbs, please. So if you have 100 mils of honey, please use 100 grams of white bread. The spicing, of course, is entirely up to you. Um, to begin with, what you will need is to grate your bread, so a normal cheese grater will do. Find your bread, a humble white loaf, and start grating. Okay, be careful with your fingers. Uh, keep the crust on too, make your hair go nice and curly. Okay, so bread is also an indicator of wealth and power. Because of the number of processes involved um, in the production of white bread, wealthy people um, could afford it. Ordinary folk would have eaten sort of simpler stuff, like wholemeal bread, which is healthy today, and barley breads, so sort of heavy dark breads. Sometimes even oats and pea flowers were used. There we go. In the old pan goes the honey. This is the next step. So pour your honey into your bowl. Be very careful. Go, just a little bit of honey there. Okay. 
Or, golden syrup, as I've said, please use, feel free to use other alternatives if you can't get your hands on honey. Although honey is more authentic. Okay, now honey itself has a natural antibacterial agent within it as well. Um, so, we're just waiting for, these, uh, for the honey to begin to boil. You'll notice when the honey begins to boil, there might be some impurities which rise to the surface. Please skim those off. So we want some nice sort of pure, uh, pure looking on honey on there. Okay, and also don't touch. So now the honey will begin uh, to start boiling there. So if you notice any any of that sort of impurities on the top, please feel free to sort of skim those off. Okay, Just keep stirring. Doesn't need to be too hot. So now the next step would be to add your breadcrumbs. So we'll add the breadcrumbs in here. Okay. Nicely finely grated white breadcrumbs. Them all in. The finished gingerbread, of course, will not be as smooth, it'll be quite a of a rough consistency and texture. So don't be too alarmed at that. Right, so we'll mix the breadcrumbs into the honey itself. If you think you need more breadcrumbs, feel free to add those along the way. Here we go. Some more. As I've said, equal quantities honey, equal quantities breadcrumbs. Okay. Now to add the spices, I shall be adding a pinch of cinnamon and nutmeg, a large pinch with the bean gingerbread of ginger, a nice fragrance, and of course, a little bit of difference, some cracked black pepper, oh, a little bit more cinnamon, because I do like cinnamon. Okay, so we'll stir that in, keep that through. Checking for the consistency as we go. What we're looking for is a nice thick paste. Okay. So the two, the bread and the honey, will start to combine. And you should find yourself with a nice sort of thick coloured paste. And with the addition of the spice, you should notice a change in colour from the white of the bread. So to the dark brown colours of the spice to give the gingerbread its recognisable colour. Oh, the mixture looks just about ready. So what I'll do is I'll uh, spoon the mixture out of the hot pan onto a nice sort of serving plate. Safety first, uh, because the pan is very, very hot, um, I'm going to be using an oven glove. I suggest you do the same. Cheers. Of course, you'll still you'll have noticed. Give it one last stir before you decant that. Artistic. If I daily flatten that, depending on the amount of quantity, depending on the quantity you have, in the sort of, in the sort of half inches. Let's pop this to one side here. And now, swing the mixture onto a serving plate and form into um, a shape, any shape you like. Um, I've just gone for a simple rectangle here um, and leave to cool on the bench for 15 to 20 minutes until it firms up. Now after 15 to 20 minutes your mixer should have firmed up. And here's one I made earlier. So thank you for listening. Please tune in again soon for another taste of the past. Don't forget to check out all our other content on www.newcastlecastle.co.uk. Stay safe and see you again soon.